The ruling comes in the middle of Mexico's war on drugs, blamed for the killing and disappearance of tens of thousands of people. Among the activists pushing to legalize marijuana is Mexico's former president, Vicente Fox, who says violence will drop once the drug is legal. The problem we know comes from drugs, cartels, servicing the huge market in the United States. And that's where they get their power because they get 55 billion US dollars in the US drug consumer market that is brought back to Mexico to bribe, to control public officials and for corruption. So uh, I am absolutely for legalization. Here with analysis of Mexico's Supreme Court ruling is Associate Professor of Political Science, David Shirk, Director of Justice of the Justice in Mexico Project at the University of San Diego. And, and David, this decision does not actually legalize marijuana in Mexico. So what did the justices decide? Uh, the justices decided in a specific case related to four individuals who wanted to assert their right to uh, grow marijuana, uh, that those four individuals will have uh, the right to grow, distribute, uh, and consume marijuana. Um, because of the way Mexico's legal system is structured, the Supreme Court does not set binding precedents until it reaches a specified number of decisions in similar cases. So in order for there to be any kind of uh, widespread precedent for all Mexicans or anyone in Mexico, the Supreme Court will have to rule multiple times or we would have to see the Mexican legislature take action that would effectively change uh, the laws to uh, abide by the Supreme Court ruling. What are our Mexico's current laws on marijuana use? Uh, currently, m marijuana consumption um, uh, is regulated, is prohibi prohibited. Um, there is a, there was a law passed a few years ago that allows for minor con possession and consumption um, of up to, say, five uh, joints of uh, equivalent of marijuana. Uh, if you are caught with that amount, you can be referred for uh, drug treatment, but you won't necessarily, you won't be arrested or face jail time. Uh, however, for larger amounts uh, for distribution and, and sale, uh, the uh, marijuana is criminalized uh, along with uh, a wide range of other drugs, heroin, cocaine, et cetera. So that being said, and what you were talking about, that unlike in the U.S., the Supreme Court doesn't just make a ruling and it sets a precedent, how significant is this ruling? Well, it's significant in the symbolism uh, in, uh, and the, the discussion uh, of Mexican drug policy and international drug policy that it stimulates, um, it will become much more significant if the Supreme Court continues to rule in this manner in other similar cases. Uh, and I'm certain that marijuana legalization activists in Mexico are continuing, are going to continue to uh, put forward cases for consideration by the Supreme Court. What remains to be seen is whether it it is uh, left to the Supreme Court to make this decision or whether the Mexican legislature acts sometime in the next couple of years to change the law and legalize marijuana. Now, marijuana seizures at the U.S.-Mexico uh, border were down by 63% in 2014 compared to the year before. So what kind of impact would legalization uh, of the drug have on the drug trade and violence? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I think the reason we're, we've seen such a huge decrease in marijuana being smuggled into the United States is that it is increasingly easy to buy marijuana in the United States legally, whether that's through medical marijuana in the 20 plus states that have legalized medical marijuana or the handful of states that have actually legalized full scale recreational use of marijuana. So that's why uh, we're not seeing as much being smuggled into the country. Um, the effect of legalizing in Mexico would be to increase the amount that's produced in Mexico. But now that we're producing so much in the United States, it's not clear that that would have a major effect. But what legalization would do is it would rob drug traffickers of probably 20 to 25 percent of their proceeds. Uh, and that, of course, will mean um, lots of former drug traffickers or marijuana growers uh, having to look for other work, uh, whether that means moving into extortion or kidnapping uh, mm -hmm. or um, robbing uh, uh, convenience stores, what have you. So I think that the long-term effect could be um, that it would put those guys out of business, but the short-term effect is that they may go doing other kinds of violent activities. In general, is there strong support to legalize marijuana in Mexico? No. Uh, interestingly, you know, as, as Mex much as Mexico has a reputation as a place that um, uh, grows and uh, distributes marijuana uh, for consumption in the United States, 
marijuana is not widely consumed in Mexico uh, by comparison. Uh, and uh, generally speaking, I think drug use is much lower in Mexico than it is in the United States. So uh, I think the social support for legalization of marijuana is much lower than in the United States uh, in Mexico. Here, you know, 55 plus percent of the population approves, and uh, in Mexico, much fewer. All right, Associate Professor David Shirk, thank you so much. Thank you.